today in this 2009 Dodge Ram pickup, we're going to show you an airlift load controller 2 compressor system for air helper springs. Part number AL25592. We'll go ahead and show you the components that come with this kit. Starting off, we're looking at the compressor right here. This is mounted underneath the vehicle on the driver's side. The compressor is all one piece unit. This is designed for outside use, so you don't have to worry about it getting uh, wet from moisture underneath the truck. Just make sure you keep it away from direct spray from the tires. Everything's sealed up on the inside. Very simple hookup. We've got one wire for ground, one wire for our power. Then the wires and the airline tubing are bundled together already from the factory as needed. This comes with teeves to make our connections here for our controller at the gauge, as well as a compressor and going out to our airbags. Here's our teeves right here that come with the kit and they go out to each individual airbag. Now the airbags do not come with the kit. This also comes with airline tubing provided to run to the airbags as well. Now this is our controller for the system here. Pretty simple, One's, one nice little black and white dial, a bleeder valve, and our switch for our air compressor. Now once everything's hooked up, it's pretty neat. When you turn on the key, it automatically senses uh, to make sure that there's five PSI in the bags at all times. I'll go ahead and put on the key and turn it to the on position. Just a few seconds of run time, and it's ready to go. Now, when you put a load in the back of the truck and squats it down, you can use this button on top to increase the air pressure and bring the truck back up. Grab up to 20 PSI. If we need to lower it down a little bit, we just hit the bleeder valve. Very slow and controlled. And if you're using this at nighttime, we turn on the headlights, and this gauge will be illuminated as well. That's all the main components that come with the kit. Next, we'll go ahead and show you how we installed it. We're underneath the driver's side door, and this is the bodywork behind it. We're going to take a compressor and mount it to the bodywork right here. It does come with self-tapping screws to install it, and you will need a 3 8 nut driver bit. We'll take this harness with the T that's already built into it, and we're going to take this in and plug it into the barb fitting onto the compressor. So this will simply slide into place. Now it'd be a good idea to go ahead and heat this uh, airline tubing up by soaking in some hot water first and then sliding it onto place. All right, now our red wire with the terminal will connect up to the red wire from our air compressor. And it'll simply push together like this. Okay, that'd be a good idea to Protect these with some electrical tape as well. Okay. Next up, here's our ground wire with the ring terminal. Now the instructions tell you to actually run to the same screw as you mount to here. I personally like to run a separate screw for that. So I'm going to use a separate self-tapping screw, number 14, which is basically the same style of the screws that we install the compressor with. Next, go ahead and work with the lengths of black airline tubing and that's going to go right into our T right here. Now it's a good idea to use a tube cutter to start off with a fresh end. Now our tube cutter we're using is part number AL10530. To install it, you push it in until it stops and push it in again. Alright, you, know, you need to take it apart for any other reason or do maintenance or anything like that on all these fittings. All you got to do is push in the airline tubing and push in this metal ring here. It could be plastic on different fittings. You can pull it right back apart. Now I'm going to take this air length of tubing and run it back to the airbags that are previously installed on our truck. Now the airbags that were installed in our truck is part number AL57365. The airlift load lifter 5000 air helper springs. Okay, this is our airline tubing we ran from the compressor down to this pre-existing line right here. So we need to put a T into that. We'll use the provided T that comes with the kit. We'll cut the line. We'll add our T in. Push it together like we did before. We'll take this length of line from our compressor, plug it into the T here. Now from our airline from our compressor, we'll go ahead and cut it off and cut it in half, add one more T to go to the other side. Okay, depending on where you mount your air compressor, you may or may not need some extra airline tubing. For a length of airline that we went from one side to the other, we use part number 
F9, 151. Okay, now to the line we're going to run to the other side, we'll go ahead and add that to our T as well. All right, now the line we just installed, we'll go ahead and run across to the other airbag and install another T. Next, we'll go ahead and show you how we ran our airline tubing. Now, everybody's going to run it a little bit different, but the main thing is to stay away from anything hot, like the exhaust, or anything moving like suspension components. Okay. So here's our airline tubing from our compressor here. We just basically followed along the wire harness right here. I looped it up and over the gas tank, so we'll just lay on top of that. Pull our excess down to here, where we made our first connection to our T. Now for our TV, we ran to the other side, went here, went above and followed the cross member and the brake line all the way across to the other side. Okay, next we'll go ahead back to our airline that has red wire tape to it. We're going to take that and route that back up towards the top of the truck. There's a lot of room in here, so I'm going to go ahead and just reach up and push it up towards the top. We'll go up to the hood and pull the rest up. Okay, now to run our airline and wiring to the inside of the vehicle, we'll drill a hole in this uh, plate right here. Depending on what you have to work with, it might be easier to drill from the outside or maybe from the inside as well. Now I'm just going to drill a simple half inch hole. Okay, so let's go ahead and run my wires and my airline tubing to the inside. And we'll pull in all our slack. Okay, now we have it ran to the inside. Let's go ahead and cut off our excess airline tubing. We won't need all of it on inside. Okay, now to our airline tubing from a compressor, we're gonna add the next wire harness and tubing combination. This is the pressure switch right here. We'll connect these two into the T. Take our wire from our compressor and put it under this tab right here. All right, now this end here, we can go ahead and make our connections to our gauge. Once again, our airline tubing will heat up and put onto this barb fitting here. All right, now our two red wires that are going to the yellow terminal will go onto this tab right here on the switch on the bottom. And then the blue terminal, the single wire, goes on the remaining tab. All right, now we'll go ahead and work with our wire with the fuse holder. This gets power from the fuse box. This will go up to a fuse that only gets power when the key is on the on position. A fuse panel is actually on the outside of the truck underneath the hood, so this will not reach. So I'm going to simply cut this in half. I'm going to use some scrap wire that I have. It could be any 12 uh, gauge wire will work just fine. We're just going to use some extra buck connectors that do not come with it as well. And we're going to run it to the outside. All right, so I'm going to add my extension to my wires. Okay, let's run this back towards the outside. Let's go ahead and pull out a wire, route to our fuse panel right here. Now this terminal is get ran to one of the fuses here. And remember, it's gonna hook up to a fuse that gets power once the key is in the on position. So you wanna get an extra set of hands to figure out which fuse does that. So we're, we found out this fuse will work just fine. It's labeled M48. All right, now after we know what fuse we're gonna use, we'll go ahead and pull it out for now, and we need to test what side of the fuse gets power. All right, with the key in the on position, this side has power. <clears throat> All right, this is our fuse tap right here. One of the legs of the fuse goes to the slot, it slides over top, and fits over top like that. So we'll go ahead and put our, our fuse tap on this side here where it has power. Then we'll take our wire with a terminal and put it onto the fuse and we have a connection made. I'm going to use a rotary tool and just make a small cut or slot on the side here. Next we'll do some sub-assembly for wires that handle illumination for the dial. We'll strip these two wires back and we're going to add the two terminals that will fit onto the back side of the light. Still working with black wire. I'm going to use this for my ground wire. So to this end, I'm going to add a ring terminal. Now a ring terminal doesn't come with the kit. Next, we'll go ahead and use some electrical tape to help bind these wires together and keep them 
lower under control. Let's go ahead and attach our wires to your terminals. For incandescent bulb, doesn't matter which one goes ground or power. All right, now red wire is going to connect up to a wire underneath the dashboard that gets hot when we turn on the headlights. We located a wire uh, just behind the parking brake pedal. It's white with a light green stripe. Okay. Using a light tester, we grounded it to the interior sheet metal and testing the white wire with the light green stripe. We turn on the running light circuit and we have power. So we'll connect our red wire to this wire. All right, this is our quick splice connector. We just snap over the wire I want to use. We'll take our red wire from our light bulb, slide it in next to it, make sure it goes in all the way. And we'll use some pliers to squeeze the metal clip and it'll connect the two wires. Once we make a connection, we'll snap the cover back over it. And then this wire here at the ring terminal, we'll ground some sheet metal back here with a self-tapping screw. Now this self-tapping screw does not come with the kit. We'll use a number eight that uses a quarter inch nut driver. All right, I want to actually use the bracket for the parking brake and we'll go ahead and use the back side of it and drill into that for our ground. We'll go ahead and mount the gauge to the dash here. Running ours a little bit high, that, we, that way we have enough room for our airline to make a gentle curve down and below the dashboard. Okay, we got one screw in. We'll go ahead and make sure it's level where we want it, and then we'll install a second screw. Now these are self-tapping screws that use a Phillips head screwdriver. Now if everything's connected up, we'll go ahead and try it out. First, we'll go ahead and check our, our illumination for our, our dial. We'll put the key on the on position, and on its first time, the pressure switch will kick on and turn the compressor on as well to make sure the airbags go up to a minimum five pound PSI. All right, let's go ahead and push the button on the top here and we'll inflate the bags. Try it out. We'll run up to 40 PSI. Then we'll go ahead and push the bleed valve, let some air out and we'll go down to 30 PSI. With everything connected up and testing out okay, let's go ahead and check our air lines for leaks. All we're going to do is spray down the, the T fittings with some soapy water and look for bubbles. With no bubbles in sight, these connections are good. We'll go ahead and check the other connections as well. And with that, that will finish it for the Airlift Low Controller 2 Compressor System for Air Helper Springs, part number AL25592 on this 2009 Dodge Ram Pickup.